my heart. Great are the works of the Lord. Full splendor and majesty is his work. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. He provides food for those who fear him. He has shown his people the power of his works. The works of his hands are faithful and just. They are established forever and ever. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Let us continue by singing the glory of pottery as it is found on the top of page 186 in the front of the hymnal. Mm -hmm.
chapter 11, appointed for this the first Sunday after Christmas, before for us in the 13th chapter of Exodus, verses 1 through 3a and 11 and 15, starting with the first verse. The Lord said to Moses, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever is the first to open the womb among the people of Israel, both of man and of beast, is mine. Then Moses said to the people, Remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, out of the house of slavery, for by a strong hand of the Lord brought you out from this place. When the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you, your fathers, I shall give it to you. You shall set apart to the Lord all that first opens the womb, all the firstborn of your animals, that are males, shall be the Lord's. Every firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb, or if you will not redeem it, you shall break its neck. Every firstborn of man among your sons you shall redeem. And when in time to come your son asks you, what does this mean? You shall say to him, by a strong hand the Lord brought us out of Egypt from the house of slavery. Or when Pharaoh stubbornly refused to let us go, the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both the firstborn of men and the firstborn of animals. Therefore, I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that first opened the womb, but all the firstborn of my sons I redeem. This is the word of the Lord. The official reading for us this morning Order for us in the third chapter of Colossians, verses 12 to 17, starting with the 12th verse. Put on then, as chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful that the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God the Father through him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks to God. Sacrifice according to what is said in the 
law of the Lord, a pair of her gloves, or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and this man was righteous and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. When eyes have seen your salvation, that you are prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for the revelation of Gentiles and for the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother marveled at what was said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and rising of many in Israel, and for a sign that is opposed, and a sword will pierce to your own soul also, so that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And there was a prophetess Anna, the daughter of Manuel of the tribe of Asher. She was advanced to years, having lived with her husband seven years from when she was a virgin, and then as a widow until she was 84. She did not depart from the temple, worshiping with fasting and prayer night and day. And coming up at that very hour, she began to give thanks to God, and to speak of him to all who were waiting for the redemption of Israel. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the gospel of the Lord.
Christ. Amen. The text for this morning quotation comes to us from the Gospel lesson. And when they had performed everything according to the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. To do these words penned by St. Luke, the Blessed Evangelist, on the inspiration of the Spirit. The divine being for this morning's meditation is steadfast faithfulness. As we look at the Gospel lesson for today, we find Joseph and Mary, numbered among the steadfast faithful. They truly believe that one day God would send a Savior to save them from their sins. And by faith, they understood that this baby that Mary had given birth to 40 days early in Bethlehem, he was the one, the promised Messiah, the light, the light of the Gentiles, the glory of thy people Israel. And both Joseph and Mary were steadfast and faithful Jews, and so they followed and they kept the laws of Moses and the word of God. And according to the laws of Moses, because 40 days had passed since Mary had given birth, both Joseph and Mary needed to be purified. And because Jesus was the firstborn male to open up the womb, he had to be presented and consecrated to the Lord. And this brought Joseph and Mary to the Holy Temple in Jerusalem because they were steadfast, because they were faithful. In order to have the laws of Moses executed properly, required the services of a Levitical priest, and that brought into the picture a Levitical priest named Simeon, also numbered among the steadfast and the faithful. In fact, our God had given to Simeon a promise the promise that before Simeon died, he would be able to see the Lord's Christ, so that he could depart in peace, and now live in peace, in the peace of God that goes beyond all human understanding, and be at peace with God, and be at peace with himself, and be at peace with the world. It was no accident that Joseph buried Jesus collided with Simeon, and Simeon collided with them. It was no coincidence. It had to be. And so it was the local priest, Simeon, who offered up the appropriate sacrifice for Mary and for Joseph and for Jesus. According to the laws of Moses, the appropriate sacrifice was supposed to be one lamb. Joseph and Mary were poor. They were poorer than poor. They couldn't afford a lamb. So they had to go with the alternate. They had to go with the replacement. And that was two birds, either two turtle doves or two pigeons that were bought and sold for one penny. And so, Simeon, the biblical priest, he executed the duties and responsibilities according to his vocation. He's the one who sacrificed two birds, life taken, blood poured out upon the altar of God, so that the sins of Joseph and Mary could be forgiven and forgotten and no more. All the sins that they committed in his lifetime and all the sins committed against him. And then it was Simeon would have then had baby Jesus placed in his hands and lifted up Jesus, exalted Jesus to the Lord to present him and consecrate him to the Lord because Jesus was the firstborn male to open up the womb. And as Simeon blessed Jesus, he said, Lord, now may your servant depart in peace. My eyes have seen thy salvation. The light, the light of the Gentiles, the glory of of thy people Israel. At that moment, the Holy Spirit tapped upon the shoulder of Simeon and opened his heart and his soul 
And by faith, Simeon now realized this one, this baby, this is the one. This is the promised Messiah. This is the light that lightens the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. What a great and awesome God you and I have. But he always keeps all of his words, all of his promises, no matter what. He is always steadfast. He is always faithful. There was yet another steadfast, faithful one, and that was Anna the prophetess. The biblical priest Simeon is the one who served inside that temple. Anna the prophetess served God outside of the temple. Holy Spirit tells us that she was the one who served the Lord by fasting and praying both day and night. And now as Jesus and Mary carried baby Jesus out of the temple, the Lord permitted Anna to see that. And now the Lord tapped on the shoulder of Anna and filled her heart and her soul and revealed to her that little baby they're carrying there. He's the one. He is the promised Messiah. He is the light that lightens the Gentiles. He is the glory of thy people Israel. And so now Anna added to her duties and responsibilities, being an evangelist, telling everybody and anybody who would listen to her the good news. The promise Messiah has arrived. And now it comes down to you, and now it comes down to me. There was a time when you and I were also presented and consecrated to the Lord. It's time that you and I came to faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And for many of us, it was just like Jesus being presented and consecrated. For many of us, it was being an infant and baby at the baptism of Juan. Our God is an awesome God. He wants even infants and babies to be a part of his family. He wants even infants and babies to be a part of of his kingdom. So when you and I were baptized, the water was comprehended as a word, and our God was steadfast and faithful, keeping the promises connected to baptism. He gave to you and me the gift of saving faith. So now by saving faith, we know Jesus as our promised Messiah, our life that's a light to the Gentiles, our glory to the people of Israel. He gave to us the gift of forgiveness of sins, as we are purified and cleansed of all of our sins and all the sins committed against us. Because you and I were baptized in the death and resurrection of Christ. All of the sins died when Jesus died upon the cross on Good Friday. They are no more. Our God gave to you and me a new man, the desire to want to live a God pleasing life. Desire to want to love the Lord our God with all of our heart and soul and mind and love our neighbor as ourselves. Desire to want to execute the duties and responsibilities of our vocation like Simeon did, holding the vocation of a Levitical priest. The desire to want to execute the duties and responsibilities of the offices that God assigns to us as we go through life. Being a steadfast and faithful Christian husband or wife. Steadfast and faithful Christian father or mother. And to execute the duties and responsibilities of the highest office in the land. The one held by Anna Prophetess, being one of the royal priests and believers. The office of Christian. Sometimes you and I as God's people wonder, so what does God want me to do as a Christian? What does God expect of me? So he's given to us his word as a light unto our feet and a light unto our path. Especially in the words of St. Paul, the blessed apostle, in the epistle lesson for this morning. So this is what God would have us do as his holy people. Treat all people with gentleness and kindness compassion, and patience, most especially our brothers and our
our sisters in Christ, those who make up the body of Christ and the family of God. Bear up with one another through forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> Truth be told, within the context of family, within the context of associates and colleagues, within the context of fellow workers, within the context of our neighbor. Truth be told, there's lots of opportunities for others to forgive you and me. Because of what we have thought, because of what we have said, because of what we have done. But also the other side of the coin is true. When it comes to members of our family, when it comes to associates and colleagues, when it comes to fellow workers, when it comes to our neighbor, there are plenty of opportunities to forgive them because of what they have thought, because of what they have said, because of what they have done. So the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer is forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The Apostle Paul continues, he would have us lift up in courage our neighbors, whoever they might be, especially our brothers and our sisters in Christ. To say those words that have to be said and heard, words like, you are amazing. Words like, hang in there, keep at it, don't give up. But also using the very word of God, the Psalms, the words, the promises, and St. Paul continues, also singing the psalms and the hymns and the spiritual songs. Because music is the fifth gospel, as Dr. Luther would say. Music lifts up the heart, the soul, and the spirit. And psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, they all contain the words and the promises. I once knew two women who were part of the LWML, and they would call each other up on opening weeks just to see what was going on and what was happening in life. And it was the duty of the one called to always open up a conversation like this, singing the words of the hymn, Jesus loves me, this I know, because the Bible tells me so. By the grace and mercy of God, many times you and I as his people, are able to execute the duties and the responsibilities of our vocation and our offices. And we are filled with joy and rejoice when we do, because then God is reflected to our thoughts and our words and our actions. And we are doing what God wants us to do. The truth be told also, a lot of times we don't. Truth be told, when it comes to you and me, at the end of the day, when you and I are about to pray our evening prayers, we think about all the things that have happened, all the conversations that have taken place. The truth be told, we realize there were more things we could have done. There were more things that we could have said. But we didn't. We all fall short. So we look to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who does not fall short. Angel of death throughout Egypt. And the angel of death claimed the firstborn male 
of all men and all animals. And Julie came out of the house where he saw the blood of the lamb painted upon the doorpost and the lintel. The angel of death had passed over that house, delivering and rescuing the firstborn male of all men and animals. And it all points to Jesus, the promise of Messiah. The sacrifice that was supposed to be offered up for Joseph and Mary to purify was a lamb. But Joseph and Mary were too poor. They couldn't afford a lamb. So they had to go with a replacement. Two birds, two turtle doves, or two pigeons. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. He is your replacement. He is my replacement. Life taken, blood poured out upon the wooden altar of the cross to deliver and rescue me from our enemies. All of sin, all of Satan, all of death. So you and I can have life, forgiveness, salvation. So when you and I look at the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when you and I look at the cross and the tomb, you and I see the steadfast faithfulness of our God. Because our God is steadfast and faithful. He then gives to you and me, his holy people, what we need to be steadfast and faithful. And our God is steadfast and faithful when it comes to love. He is a special kind of love, unconditional love. No prerequisites, no preconditions, no strings attached for all people. He wants all people to be saved. And our God is all inclusive. It includes all people, whether they are old, like Anna, or they are young, like Joseph and Mary, or they're even younger, a baby and an infant, like Jesus. Our God wants all people as a part of his family and his kingdom. It includes all guys and all girls. In the gospel lesson for today, we find two guys, Joseph and Simeon. We find two girls, Mary and Anna. It doesn't matter if you were married. It doesn't matter if you were single. It doesn't matter if you were widowed. It doesn't matter where you are in your lifespan. Who you are, what you are, and where you are. You are the most important thing to our God. And he cares deeply about you. You are his hidden treasure. You are the pearl of great price. You are the royal diadem in his hand. And so your God will always be steadfast and faithful to you. <coughs> steadfast faithful is one of the eternal attributes of our God. Especially when it comes to his words and promises. Words and promises such as these. For the times we were all alone and lonely. He promises you he'll never forsake you, forget you, or abandon you. But he is with you even until the end of the year. To listen when no one else will listen, to understand and get you when no one else gets it, and help you when no one else will help you. You and I are ending the year 2021, starting a new year 2022, with a lot of doubts, a lot of fears, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of maturity. So our God promises to be with you as a solid rock upon which you stand. Because all the ground is nothing more than sinking sand. Now whatever this next year brings to you, whatever happens to you, he reminds you that he is always with you. And Jesus with you, and you with Jesus, can handle anything and everything the new year brings forth. He promises to be your strength in times of weakness the times you were weak and weary cannot go on. He promises to remain by your side, to pick you up when you have fallen down, and 
carry you when you are too weak to go on. He promised to be your present help in all times of trouble. Remember that we have the great, the awesome God, the but trying God, the God who is, will always be above and before all the other gods of this life and this world. The God who created all the heavens and all the earth, and all that exists in the heavens and all that exists on the earth. The God to whom all power and authority belongs. So there is no problem too big that he cannot handle. Nor is we concerned with small. Because you were his people. You were the ones who were numbered among the sentence and the faith. What a great and awesome God you and I know. The God who is always steadfast, faithful, always keeping all of his words, all of his promises, no matter what. The God you and I can always trust in, always count upon, always depend upon, no matter what. Today, tomorrow, even for all of eternity. In Jesus' name, amen. Another piece of God for past of human understanding. May it bless your faith to life everlasting. Amen. Let us now stand and sing to the great name.
just cried, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue by singing the Thanksgiving hymn. The first four verses of the hymn 563, Jesus thy blood. Seven hundred twenty-five. 